going under. I'm going to just wait here for him to come back up. He went down under, right under the beach. Hey, Bob the Spider Hunter here. It's the first day of May. As they say, the spring showers bring out the May flowers. And in Holland, the area I live in, uh, there's lots of flowers to be seen. And for this time of year, it's tulips. People come here from all over the country to visit Holland, Michigan and enjoy tulip time. And it is quite the display of tulips. I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of tulips planted here. And every year they come up faithfully and brilliantly looking just gorgeous. Even though spring is Hopping with flowers here in Holland, Michigan, and West Ottawa. The pond, not popping with much right now, but the tadpoles. But it is the first day of May, and uh, by June and July, I'll have my six spotted fishing spiders to go find. It's not hard to see that um, spring is here. But when it comes to the six-spotted fishing spider, which is what my experiment's been all about, where does that spider go when it jumps off a leaf into the water? Well, we'll find out in this episode. Got these two right here at home. Um, a nice, a nice water habitat for them, where I can feed them and film them up close. They seem to be have adjusted to it uh, quite, quite nicely. So we'll see if uh, they'll, they'll let me uh, maybe uh, handle one or both of them. Um, we'll try with the male first, because the female, well, they're both pretty skittish. The, the male seems to be a little more skittish than the female, so we'll try him first and see how that goes. There you go. Yeah. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Huh? Uh-uh. That wasn't so bad. Male six-spotted fishing spider up close and personal. You're a pretty cool spider, you know that? Yeah. You want to get back in the water? There you go. There you go. Right there in the water. Don't kick too close to that female. She might decide you look like a good piece of lunch. Now before we go any further, I just wanted to explain to you what the habitat looked like that I was using for these two male and female six-spotted fishing spiders 
it looks something like this. This is a lot smaller. It was a larger container, clear plastic, clear bottom, and then it had a top so I could look through the top or take the top completely off, keep the water level up to about an inch from the top, and they were quite content to stay on the leaves in the habitat so I could film them. I will tell you, it wasn't so good from the bottom, even though I was filming through a glass table between the glass and the plastic bottom of the container, it just fogged up the, uh, the clearness of the picture. Got good shots through the side and obviously through the top. So that's what you're seeing. Um, just wanted to describe it to you so you know what the habitat looked like. With that, let's continue to show you what I discovered with these spiders. Sorry about the movement, it's very breezy out here this afternoon. So let's begin with the experimentation. A habitat has been set up to simulate what it'd be like on the surface of the pond as the spiders rested on some leaves. And then when startled, where do the spiders go when they dive off the leaves into the water? That's what I'm attempting to observe and to film. Spiders have been placed in the habitat. They're enjoying, they've gotten used to the habitat. They rest on the surface of the water on top of the leaves. And I've noticed early on one thing had already disturbed them, causing them to jump into the water. How you doing there, Miss Tansy? Yeah, enjoying the sunshine? Good girl. It's not here right now, but right over here in the center of my deck, I had a table, a glass table, and I put the aquatic habitat on the center of the table. Then I set up my cameras to film around it. But every time I stepped out of my house, when I opened my sliding door, they could hear the sound of my feet on the deck. And as soon as they heard that, both of them jumped into the water. This would go on day after day. So I got smart and decided let's set up the cameras and film them before I come out of the door. And that worked to a point. The problem is they got used to hearing the slider door open and shut and uh, hearing me walk on the deck. So they got used to that sound and they stopped jumping in the water. So then I had to resort to other means the longer they were staying here with me to get them to dive off the leaves into the water. In this opening footage, I had walked up to the habitat and startled both the male and female, and they quickly jumped into the water. And you can see them underneath the leaf that they're clinging to. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Well, sometimes when the fishing spider gets startled and jumps off of the leaf that it's on fishing from, it just flips right underneath the leaf, clings to it from underneath until it feels safe again, and then it will come back on top of the leaf. This situation involved two fishing spiders, a female, and right behind her, a male. male fishing spider has popped up to the surface and taken his place on the top of the leaf again. And the female will probably be joining him shortly.
female remains underwater upside down on the bottom of the leaf and on top we have the male who is um, manicuring grooming himself working on his front right leg cleaning the water or food materials that have clung to the little hairs on those legs. You can see his pedipalp there as he's brushing down the leg. Pretty interesting and large size pedipalps for the male six spotted fishing spider. Spiders actually groom a lot during the, uh, the day. They're very clean animals. And as the day progresses, you'll find them grooming themselves quite often. The little barb hairs you can see on the legs, those are not only used to smell, sometimes to taste, feel, Certainly very important to the survival of the spider. Well, let's go back underneath and see what the lady's doing. We'll leave this gentleman to his grooming. And she's quite content on the underside of a leaf. And just as fast as that, the female has headed back underwater. Well, the female has resurfaced from the deep, <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't have laughed, I caught her off guard and scared her, but uh, she grabbed a beetle I threw in there and nabbed him underwater, hanging on the bottom of the leaf she was sitting on. So she didn't catch herself a fish this time, but she did capture herself a beetle I put in there and she's uh, making short work of him and little male over here poor guy sitting near her poop that's never a fun thing to do alright I'm just gonna leave these two here to enjoy this nice summer day and enjoy their little habitat where it's cool and it's partially sunny and has a few things in there for them to eat. I've learned a few things about this six-spotted fishing spider since I've been filming it for the last two weeks. One thing, when I was at the ponds, I thought the spider, when it left the top of its leaf or a piece of wood or whatever it was uh, resting on, if you came up on it and it spotted you, it would quick make a quick dash into the water. I thought it was heading down into the uh, the leaf debris at the bottom of the pond, but I've come to believe otherwise after observing this spider for the last couple of weeks and watching what it does when it's spooked by me when I approach it. Now since I have never observed a fishing spider before, especially one, a female with her egg. I don't really know what I'm going to be seeing, but I can tell you this morning what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm.